Today, I wanna to tell you about the best way that you can steal kick drums from your favorite producer. Hey guys, Dilby here, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to tell you about the best way that you can steal kick drums from your favorite producer. But don't worry, of course, I'm gonna show you how to put your own creative spin on it and make it your own. In house and techno, the kick is generally the loudest element. It's like the driving force of the track. So you really want it to be the best it can be. I know from both my own tracks and my work engineering for clients, often just changing out the kick drum can actually elevate the track to the next level. Sometimes this is all it takes to bring everything together. So what I wanna show you is a technique for sourcing kick drums from your favorite artists, from pros that you love, you love the music, you know this kick drum works and you want it in your track. Well, how do you do that? Let's find out. Hey guys, so I'm just editing this video and I realized there's something important that I didn't include in the video. I'm in the process of building a website so that I can offer my mixing, mastering and engineering services to more people. So I'll leave the email address for the studio in the description. So if you're interested in any of those kind of services, then hit me up. If you're in Berlin or want to travel here, I also offer one-on-one -on -one studio sessions to work on your music. Another really cool service that I'm offering is track feedback, which will also be really affordable. Uh, you send me your track, basically I'll download it, bring it into Ableton, check through it, and I'll give you some feedback, either written or video. If you're interested in any of that, then just drop me an email and let's chat. So back to the video. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton. Now the first thing I want to address is like, there are definitely other videos out there on YouTube talking about this and showing you how to do it with like fancy multi triple layered racks. And I've downloaded some of these racks, I've tried it, but basically for me, it's too long, too complicated. I like to just bam, 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 get things working and move on to the next thing, you know? My goal is to finish tracks, get them out, get them signed. So the method I'm gonna show you is super quick and easy so you can implement it and just move on. So the first thing to consider when you're doing this is to find a source track that's got like a similar BPM, a similar style, the same key can be a real advantage. And I suggest using a track from an artist you really like, one of their tracks that's in a similar style to what you're writing. A great reason for using a kick from a track that's familiar is you know it works really well. So that means your kick, the low end, is gonna work really well in the club. So the second thing to consider is trying to find as clean a sample of a kick drum as possible. In most tracks, it's really unlikely that you're gonna find just a perfectly sampleable kick drum. It's probably gonna have hi-hats and things over top, but what you wanna try and avoid is bass notes and like really tonal percussion, really deep percussion. The things up top are not as important. You just wanna have ideally like a clean sub layer. So the third thing that I really recommend is that your source file is a lossless file, like a WAV or AIFF. If you're using a source file from a lossy format like MP3, the fidelity is just not gonna be as good. And the kick drum is the foundation of your track, so you want it to be as high fidelity as possible. When I do this, I'll always buy the track from Beatport or Bandcamp. That way, I'm supporting the artist a little bit that I'm stealing from. So let's move on and get into how to do this. I've got here a track from Jansen's, amazing producer, he's one of my favorites. Now we're gonna look generally at the start or the end to find a clean kick drum. I always try to avoid the first kick drum in the track because this can sometimes have artifacts from the mastering process. So we're just gonna find this on the third beat, loop it up. Now I'll go to my kick, drag and drop. I can zoom in here. So we can see that's got the start of the transient from the next clap. So we just wanna clean up this loop that we're not getting any unwanted transients in there. Get that in nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is right click and go crop sample. So now we've just got one beat with the kick in the preceding hat. Let's take a listen. Great. First thing I'll always do is check the key of the kick. So I can do that with a spectrum in the notes preset and I'm just gonna transpose this kick up 12 semitones and we can play it. So when I mouse over the fundamental frequency, the spectrum tells me that's an A. 90% of the time kick drums are gonna be in F, F sharp, G, G sharp or A. That just seems to be the area of the frequency spectrum where they work best. So I'd suggest you transpose that up or down one or two semitones to work with the key of your track. Now we're gonna isolate the part of the kick that we're gonna use. So just turn on the filter and play the kick and bring the filter down until you can just hear the sub. It's 
So to me that's gotten rid of all of the hi-hat, so we're sounding good. Next we're going to filter envelope section, turn that on and bring that up to 72. So we're already pretty close. We're just going to fine tune the decay amount. Bam, and that's sounding really good already. Because we've taken out a lot of that high and mid frequency information, it sounds good, it's usable, but it's a bit bland for my taste. So what I like to do is add a top kick in to just give it a bit more character. So I can thoroughly recommend the kick drums from Underground Shades of House, which is out now on House of Loop. Make sure to grab yourself a copy. So then we're just gonna high cut this. I like to do it around five to 600 hertz. Let's have a listen. So just getting kind of the click and a bit of the character of that kick. Then I like to add in a 48 dB cut uh, around 110, 120 hertz, just to ensure that we're not getting any of that sub information. Now let's listen to them both together. Just adjust the volume until it sounds balanced and they're working well together. So that's working well, but what I like to do is audition in hot swap mode while the track's actually playing, so I can find a top kick that works really well with the sub that we've sampled. So for me, that one has a really nice attack and sits well with the sub. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. If you did, make sure you hit the like button and let me know. Subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Then YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. Also, why not DM me on Instagram? It's at DilbyDJ and show me how you're incorporating this technique into your tracks. I love hearing from you guys and I always try my best to get back to everyone. So I look forward to hearing from you. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Get out there and get stealing some kick drums. We'll catch you next time. Peace.